Okay, so I'm gonna try to take this apart. I already got the other one somewhat loose, so what I'm doing here is I'm just loosening these metal tabs. And you gotta be careful because this is all plastic, but if you wanna get it get it to come out, you have to um Take your chances. There's the bracket. Here's the the relay. So it's a little easier to uh, to clean it that way. So what I'll do next is just give it a good cleaning. See what it looks like. With all this dirt on it. It's about four years of gunk. What I'm using here is just a paper towel with some, uh, what is it, purple power that I'm using as a cleaner. And again, the idea is to just see how, how it looks without the, uh, look at this. Actually, it's not too shabby, so it gives me a better idea of what I'm looking at here. And um, I don't, don't need to paint this, which would be great. At least this plastic portion. I can just mask that and uh, paint this part. Just because it's oxidized over the years. But anyway, not too bad. Here's the other one yet to be cleaned. A little bit of elbow grease and a uh, heck of an improvement. Maybe I'll give this a little light sanding. See, see what it looks like, and then I may just spray some um, either gold or the cast metal, whatever, just to give it a nice, even finish. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty, pretty hard to. Uh, to clean, but I used uh, sandpaper and uh, steel brush. But I noticed down here what they did is, I guess when they were painting the car, they, they had some primer over spray. So that's a bummer because they got it here, here, a little bit there. This side is pretty clean, but uh, still may have to uh, 
spray some paint. I mean, it's not necessary really because you can't see it, but I mean, if you're gonna restore something, might as well try to do it right. And um, this is just gonna surface corrosion. Too bad again compared to the other one. Look at that. So, quite the difference. These are going to be a little trickier. They're identical, by the way. Same um, bolt holes and uh, and these little tabs are in the same location, so that's great. Uh, I wish I had a, a little sandblaster, but I do not. So I guess a little uh, sanding and uh, some paint will have to do. Okay, so I masked this thing to the best of my ability and um, I'm gonna give it a coat of paint, probably use Sam. I like that uh, that paint a lot. So we'll see how it turns out. Oh, and then I have to um, mask this portion in order to paint the uh, the top. Okay, so I give it a coat of. Sam um, gloss black. I think it's it's a heck of an improvement. Anyway, may have to give it another one in a few minutes. So next, I have to uh, mask this one. Of course, the uh, the dots are gone. May have a solution for that. If not, I know exactly. I mean, they're they're marked. Are y g so shouldn't be a problem and in case you're interested this particular one is the gloss black there's also a, a satin which is perfect for interiors this is the sem color coat and again this is a 15013 lando black and um this is the Gloss Black, great product. Okay, so this is the, the dirty one. This one I just kind of sanded and I gave it once over with the, uh, with a steel brush, just regular sandpaper. Kind of smooth it out and uh, I'm gonna give it a good cleaning with uh, Goof Off. I'm thinking I'm going to paint it, maybe silver. Hey guys, well, it's the next day. As you can see, the um, the relays are painted. They turn out pretty decent, I think. I uh, even tried <laughs> applying a drop of paint to um, identify the, uh, the uh, connections there, red, yellow, and green. Uh, that's questionable, but at least, you know, whatever. Um, they look great. Uh, I also painted the the bolts, cleaned them up and gave them a coat of, of paint. And the brackets, I painted silver, as you can see. Um, they turned up pretty, pretty sweet. So I wanna, Start putting them together now. Okay, so I, uh, I'm going to start reassembling these things. The brackets, as I mentioned earlier, they are, they are identical. So no worries there. And basically what you have is you have these three little tabs that I bent in order to remove the um, the relay and you 
can see the same pattern here for the three tabs, the uh, back portion. And basically what you're doing is you're just repositioning the, uh, the relay there. And next, what I'm gonna do is probably with, with a screwdriver, I am going to press the tabs back onto the um, to the base of the of the relay, so that should hold it in place. I uh, let me see if I can show you what I plan to do is use the edge of the of the workbench here, so I can have a flat surface and uh, and apply good pressure. But I'm going to have to do that off camera. I cannot hold the tripod and uh, and do the the work. So I'll be back in a sec. Let me try to film this to show you these are not there we go there's one there's two of them that's already in place and I have to probably use a block of wood so I can apply pressure from, uh, from this end. This one is it's gonna be a little trickier. I'm using a couple of pieces of one by twos. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, um, to do this without blocking the camera. This actually is too thick here, so let me see what other screwdrivers I have, this is, yeah, this is not good. Well, the only thing I can actually fit in here comfortably is this flat file, but I didn't want to scratch anything, so I'm going to use this, see if I can push and the, the reason this is kind of tricky also is because I don't know if you can see this this tab there is kind of blocked in a, in a sense it's not off center you have to go in here kind of at an angle and it can be a little tricky to bend but it's totally manageable so let's see if I have any luck here That's much better. And then let me finish bending these as well. Oh yeah, you, you don't wanna have any rattles there. So that is that, very cool. Quite an improvement over what was there before. And even my little paint um, marks there, they don't look too shabby. And, and again, this is it's not gonna be really seen under the, um, the nose of the car. You'll barely see the hose that's connecting to, the, uh, to these terminals here, but heck, Maybe this way it'll last another 40 plus years. So let me finish the next one. So I have everything ready for installation of the relays. I like to keep everything kind of together like you see here. Makes things a lot easier. So very happy with the results. They look great. <laughs> Let's see.
now you're probably thinking, what the heck is he doing? Well, I'll explain in a second. I promise it'll make sense in a second, or maybe it won't. Hmm. Well, I talk about restoring these um, headlamp relays, and they turned out pretty, pretty nice. But I was looking at the bottom part and I was curious, why in the heck do they have this odd looking thing? And then it occurred to me, well, first of all, there's way, ways to test these ports, how, they, how they're how they working. Um, but anyway, you feed vacuum, I believe, through the white line. The red, the red port is for that looks actually like, um, if you think about it, like a, a, a traffic uh, light, which I think is pretty neat. And of course, stop, red, would be for closing the, uh, the headlamp doors. Green is to open. And the yellow one is like, I don't know what the yellow stands for, um, but I, 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 I do know that this yellow line goes to the reservoir or the uh, whatever vacuum tank. So you can apply vacuum and test. The, the simplest way to do this is to use this little valve here. I'm not guaranteeing that this is... Um, a very good test, but it actually gives you an idea if the if the diaphragm in, inside the uh, relay is working. And what you know, again, I don't know if this will focus, but um, you see, this is kind of mine was really dirty, and there was a little overspray because I spray painted this this whole thing. But uh, with a brush, I gently kind of cleaned in there, and then I thought, well, I'm gonna test it. And, and to do that, what I what I did is I took a um, a small flat head screwdriver, and I press here on the valve. And I don't know if I can do this here now because I'm, you know, you have to apply a little bit of pressure. But uh, let's try it. You hear that? Well, that is the vacuum. So if I press down and I plug this port, that stays in and then it comes, you know, releases. But anyway, I was doing a little bit of research online and I did find out, because these are exposed to the elements, of course, that there is supposed to be like a little filter in there. <laughs> so, what do they say, necessity is the mother of invention or something like that? I decided to take one of these cheapo, and they are cheapo. It comes in a, in a little set of like four or five pads from a Dollar Tree, I think. That's where I bought them. These are just scrubbing pads. They're very gentle, and uh, I chose yellow because... That's the only thing I had. Well, I, I, I'm lying. I, I had also like a pinkish um, pad. Maybe it was manly pink. I don't know. But what I'm doing here is I'm making my own little filter. I don't know if this is going to work, but I don't see why it wouldn't. And of course, one little piece of of the foam would just kind of fall out. And I'm trying to cut them to size because, because OCD, I guess, but I don't want them to look bad. And these are not so dense that they will allow air to, 
go through, but it'll hopefully keep dirt out, which is the whole purpose. And the reason I'm cutting, I'm doubling up here is because again, they're, they're kind of too thin, which is great because I can make them a little thicker like that. And if I sandwich them together, they add a little bit of pressure. Look at that. Would you look at that? And of course, this would be per a perfect time to use uh, a vacuum pump, which I do not. Do I have one? Hmm. I don't think so. But anyways, that makes, I think, a pretty darn good filter. Kind of looks cool. I don't think it's, it's, I mean, it's, it doesn't have to be like plugged or anything. I'm gonna leave it open because I want the air to flow through here. And again, just keep the dirt out. And I'm gonna make another one for this other relay. So, I think that's a pretty good solution, if you want to call it that. And um, great. So I wanted to share that because I don't think the restoration is complete unless you have the right or Again, I'm not, I shouldn't say right because this is not what came originally with the, uh, with the relays. But I think that that little foam is going to help quite a bit and um, so it's just a, a suggestion I mean you can try to find the right foam if someone sells that uh, new I'm sure new relays would have a piece of foam in there but again you know if you want to <laughs> buy a Corvette specific uh, piece of foam for like 10 or 15 bucks whatever go right ahead but uh, for me for, for you know my uh, car that should be fine. The relays were working okay without a piece of foam there. So, and I, th I think the uh, the only purpose of, of that thing is to keep dirt out. So, anyway, that's it for now.